April ended with extraction of the vertical tie rods of the bridge trusses. This is a collection of some of them with yellow flags on those with identifiable maker's marks. Two gin poles are being used to hoist pairs of truss cross braces up off the bottom cords and tie them temporarily to the Maybe Bridge to allow rehabilitation of the bottom cord. An oblique view better shows the grip hoist, a very reliable mechanism approved even to suspend workers. Cable can be smoothly taken up or let out with no worry of the line playing out uncontrollably. The bases of the gin poles fit between the top cords of the panels on each side of the Maybe Bridge and rest on heavy timbers. Although the gins would have been far taller, they would have sat between the bottom cords not riding atop of the Maybe Bridge. A system much like this is almost without question how Woods Bridge was assembled on the false work over the river 158 years ago. This is the first truss main brace and counter brace section that has been lifted out of the cast iron shoes on the bottom cords and tied to the Maybe Bridge temporarily to allow for repair work on the cord. The counter braces served partly to hold the main braces during construction in 1862, as they do here during deconstruction and reconstruction. The main braces tilt toward the center of the bridge, characteristic of a Howe truss. The counter braces also provide small additional stiffness and redundant safety and support to the otherwise deterministic Howe truss. The burr arch provides the main redundant safety and support.
This nicely shows truss braces in their original positions, in the distance, versus lifted from the bottom cord and tied to the maybe bridge. Sheer failure at a halving joint in an upper lateral member that did not survive disassembly, though you can see by the oxidation that the failure began long ago. This area is where the arch was bolted to the bottom cord on the southeast side, upstream. Clearly there was an unchecked leak that ran down the arch and kept this area damp. Next to be disassembled are the framed buttresses at each end of the bridge. These are what you see when you enter the bridge, as shown in this classic view photograph from the DPR South Yuba River State Park brochure. We fade into a second version of the picture, photo modified to bring the buttress out of the dark, as well as the first set of truss braces. In the following photos, the southeast buttress is carefully photo documented to help instruct how the framing pieces interact and guide accurate rebuilding and reassembly of the buttress. It is soon to be dismantled. Removed buttress headers from South Portal. There is no known name for these, and we have to call them something. Buttress pieces tagged to help return those being reused to their rightful places, and to help replicate those not being reused along with meticulous in situ survey and documentation. lifting the steel frame to put it into the construction yard. The frame was added in the 1970s to give strength to carry motor vehicles. Top view of South Portal Buttress, east, upstream, side, where it meets the first counterbrace of the bridge truss.
south end after removal of portal buttresses. The buttress tie rods on both sides remain supported by their embedment in concrete. South work platform for construction of improved retaining wall and raised abutment. The stub is what remains of the burr arch. Bottom cord cleared of truss braces in preparation for rehabilitation. The brace feet are at the left. Their shoes remain on the cord. Note the shape of the cast iron shoes laps tightly over the edge of the cord to hold the shoes centered on the cord. The first phase of rehabilitating the bottom cords was to add camber, arch, as the bridge was lifted. We are now in the second phase, replacing a few rotted timbers and plank laminates and straightening the noticeable lateral waggle on both sides seen in drone overflights. These were now measured at more than 5 inches, mainly in the upstream direction. To correct this, the upstream east cord was pulled from the maybe bridge and the downstream west cord was pushed from the maybe. During these operations, each cord had to be lifted slightly from the steel hanging beams to remove friction. This was done with walking jacks, in which jacks rested atop timbers that tipped as the cords moved. When the cords were straight, they were lowered back onto the hanging support beams. Pulling the east cord downstream with a strap and hand-operated come-along tied to the maybe bridge, one of several along the cord. The west cord is deformed downstream, straightened, by a push applied with a timber propped against a maybe bridge panel beam. Meanwhile, work begins on raising the south abutment by first tuck-pointing the rock facade wall, removing and replacing the grout between rocks. When the wall is sound, material behind it will be excavated and augmented with fresh reinforced concrete for the abutment. This perspective shows lifting is with a timber beam supported on the Maybe Bridge lower cord.
cutting a new butt joint end on an in-place cord plank. This is particularly tricky with the cut being done upside down with access barely better than a 2 inch slot. <laughs> 